So as Phil said, I am going to wear two hats today to bring two different perspectives. And I invite you to wear these two hats with me so that we can all wear to these perspectives. The first hat that I'm gonna wear is my corporate hat, the one I use to bring the perspective of the brand. The second hat is my hat as a universal citizen, the one I use as Fernanda, a person that loves life, nature, culture, diversity, my family, my little girl, good coffee. So wear to this hat, to these two hats with me, your corporate perspective and your citizen perspective. For this first story, I'm gonna wear my corporate hat. So back in the 90s, I was working as an internet marketeer for an international marketing company, really feeling that I was riding the wave of the new internet marketing forms by selling banners and email campaigns. Until I received an internet manifesto that changed my life. And this manifesto had 95 theses from which I'm gonna share two with you tonight. Markets are conversations. Markets are getting smart, informed, organized. So what this manifesto articulated gave voice to what I already knew. And that's the internet is changing the world. And not only that, it's coming with new rules. So corporations will have to learn new, new rules. Brands will have to be more true, more authentic. They will have to be listening to people. So the, I was, that was, moment was choiceless for me. I had to give up my corporate hat to learn these new forms, wear my universal citizen, and engage and learn and participate in the emergence of social media. So a lot has happened since these days. Social networking sites are everywhere. Facebook has 800 million active users, larger than many countries. Who here has a Facebook account? Twitter has 100 million active users per day. Who has here a Twitter account? I also see people more and more using mobile everywhere I go. So connectedness really seems to be present and popular these days. So for this talk, I'm going to share stories about beauty brands and how they're using social media. I'm also going to share stories about conversations about brands in social media. As I go through these stories, we will explore more about conscious markets and the concepts of the true, the good, and the beautiful. So for these first examples, I really need to wear my corporate hat. Beauty brands are really creative. They're doing great campaigns in Facebook and Twitter with astounding results. And not only the campaigns, but the ways they're using it. From customer service to informing for events, from online campaigns to all scopes and sizes, they are really using it for sales participation branding. Examples are CoverGirl got eight, one, no, they got 8,000 likes in Facebook the first day they launched their videos for makeup tips. Oscar de la Renta provided for 25,000 samples using Facebook geographic localization services. So what happened is that people would go online, they would see where is the closest store, they would go to the store, they pick up the sample, they went online and provide for feedback. Awesome, you know, cost related. Clarence is coming into the social gaming in Facebook with its game, Spa for Life where people have the opportunity to become a spam manager and provide for services. From my corporate hat, all this looks like awesome campaigns. They're really providing for innovative ideas. They're really providing for things for, uh, for people. But I'm gonna change to my universal citizen hat because I do hold one question and that is, I would 
like to see, is there any social media that beauty brands are doing that provides for goodness for the people and the planet? So to answer to that, I will change again to my corporate hat. And I'm going to share some stories about this topic. And that is linked about how beauty brands are linking buying products to donation for charities and uh, causes, social action. So from Avon to sports brands to restaurants, they are uh, doing, uh, linking these. And they're right, you know, because the, the data shows that when people link donations to buying, they really like that. For example, in October is Pink October for supporting breast cancer, and Aveda is doing, taking this opportunity to do some social uh, actions online. I'm also going to talk about other kinds of campaigns, and this one I enjoy really, really um, a lot, and that's Mac Viva Glam campaign, where was promoting Ladies Gaga, Lady Gaga, the singer, living with passion, loving with protection. This campaign had two purposes. One was to create a global collaboration fashion show, and the other one was to promote buy a lipstick, save a life. They were doing incredible follow-up about the production of the whole global collaboration show. It was truly amazing. But now I'm going to wear my Universal Citizen hat to speak about this same campaign with another perspective. And uh, from this perspective, I really like that 15,000 people sent their pictures to be part of Ladies Gaga's dress. I also honor that the brand gave 100% of the money to patients with AIDS. Um, my question here is that when I read, buy a lipstick, save a life, I interpret, so, if I don't buy a lipstick, I don't save a life? So could it be that some brands are creating an image of social good in one side while are creating polarization for other markets? So let's look at another a story about charity and how it impacts the conscious markets. This next story is about also about millennials. Who have heard about millennials? Okay. So millennials are described to be the first generation of kids raising the internet age. So imagine, they're really fast learners, they're peers, they trust their peers, they work with information, they are producers, they link everything. They're, they're, they're seen as one of the most progressive generations that ever had lived. So this girl, a millennial, was reading a famous teenager magazine when she saw this ad about an oil-free acne soap. And then, you know, the, it was pretty fancy, this ad, and it has a small smell and scratch in it, and it had two actresses endorsing the brand, and, 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 it also had this incredible offer, you know, we're giving one dollar of the purchase to a global cause. So she thought, as a conscious teenager, she thought, hey, my kind of a deal. Yeah, don't forget, she's a millennial. She knows, she's an incredible researcher. So before doing that, she looked at the back of the soap, and she found that it had ingredients that were not good for her body. She felt pretty disappointed. So what she said is, this is out of integrity. I have to do something. So what she did is that she wrote a blog post about her experience. She was later, later she was uh, published in a teenager magazine about toxic beauty. And she created tons of ripples across social media channels. If a brand is going to support charities for cancer, they really have to take care that their products have no ingredients that are linked to cancer. And you can see that conversation happening today that is called the pink washing conversation. 
And uh, to illustrate a bit more about millennials and the power they're having for consciousness, I'm going to speak about the Project Green Challenge. And this is a project of a group of millennials called, called Teens Turn Green. So these guys came up with a 30-day challenge to invite people to shift into a life, into a conscious lifestyle. And they're providing resources and links and learning and conversation. It's still going on. I think it's in day 20 something. And they are, give, one of the days, they are looking into teaching people how to read the labels of their cosmetic products. And they're teaching them about what are the apps that they can download so that they can scan the product and they can learn fast what is in the product, what's the social good, what are they behaving, what is the true good and beautiful. This is an incredible story and you can follow it up as well. So, um, the next story I'm going to share with you is about Dr. Bronner Magic Soaps. Not a very fancy brand, but it's incredible. This is the story about a doctor who had, in, his parents were in a long tradition of soap making and that on the Holocaust. When he grew up, no wonder, he created a soap brand and he's promoting oneness, global peace, world peace, and um, all um, support for all world religions. So this is a brand that is famous because it has affordable prices, and it helps charities all across the globe without promoting any in marketing buzz. They're also being really big in the organic cosmetics movement. Dr. Broner's uh, mission is to uh, have a company, drive a company that is good for customers, employees, his family, and the planet. It's really about the true good and beautiful. True because they are using uh, organic materials and all their bottles are 100% recyclable. Beautiful because they're, in, they're creating the next world, the next world to come. And good because it's good for everyone and it's also good for the people. So this is a nice brand to see because people are really looking for truth. They're looking for transparency and they're looking for goodness. So the last stories I'm going to share with you are one that I found while I was following the conversations about the campaign for safe cosmetics in Facebook. So this, this uh, page has a, um, about 50,000 followers. So one day I was the, there doing my research and I saw this post of a brand that was inviting people to offer, uh, they, was, they were offering people to take a behind the scenes look at their products. So this post had a note in it that said, okay, tell them to give you a behind the scenes look at the ingredients of their products. This conversation was really taking well in this, in this page, let me tell you. So it had like 200 likes, tons of conversations, and I was following them and I was like, with the mouth open to see the incredible chemistry knowledge that these guys have. I mean, I couldn't follow that story. I don't have that chemistry knowledge, but I did learn a lot because there was a group of smart people that are providing for a higher intelligence for the whole group. It was quite amazing. So, um, the next uh, and last, last story is about a group of game video players that solved a molecular puzzle that had troubled scientists for 12 years. Okay, so these guys were giving a molecular game. They could, you know, like chief molecules around. And they took 10 days to solve this puzzle. Scientists now say that this, what the accomplishment of these players is, can be, provide, can be provided for, or can be leading towards crowdsource cures of AIDS and other diseases. Remember crowdsourcing? Jean-Francois was talking about yesterday, people creating together. This is, this ha, the world has never seen. So, to wrap up my conversation, I'm gonna recall three points.
points. Markets are conversations. In social media, it's not about the amount of followers you have. It's about depth, authenticity, trust. It's about relating with them to be human. It, they don't expect brands to be perfect. They expect you to be evolving with them. They want to be invited to the conversation, and they want you to join their conversation. So do so. The next is that markets are becoming conscious. So from cultural creatives to millennials, they are inventing ways to live in high value standards. They don't want to buy from the best company of the world. They want to buy from the best company for the world. In the highest and fullest ethical sense, they are wearing what they believe in. Embrace them. And the third point is that there is a great opportunity to create the true, good, and beautiful market. And you can tap to an incredible source of knowledge that lives within the holomidal intelligence. You need the, the, um, to act on it and to be ready for the beautiful of creativity and radical innovation. So go out there. The biggest laboratory in the world is out there. For this last question, I have to wear my corporate hat. And I have, I, I invite you to wear it with me. In the next 10 years, there will be conscious brands and X brands. Which one will you want to be? Thank you.